Hello and welcome to County Report This Week. I'm Lorna Vigili. Coming up on this show, hundreds flock a job fair held at the East County Community Recreation Center. Plus, are you ready for the first snowstorm? Well, the county is. We take you to the annual snow summit. And later, the holiday season is here, and that means the light switch is turned on at the Garden of Lights at Brookside. But first, the minimum wage in Montgomery County will go up to $15 an hour in 2021. This week, Executive Ike Leggett signed into law the recently passed legislation. This is an important day for Montgomery County. Uh, I'm honored as county executive to have the opportunity to find historic piece of legislation. Again, I want to thank Councilmember Mark Eldridge, for all of the members of the county council behind me, but more importantly, the coalition that it put forth this great, great piece of legislation through all of their work and all of the efforts they've had over the last year. First one goes to Mark. <laughs> It's official. The minimum wage has been increased to $15 an hour in Montgomery County. Executive Ike Leggett signed the past legislation at CASA, one of the organizations that advocated for the increase. Reminding people that none of us make $15 an hour. Your struggles and your labors aren't our struggles and our labors. And this is all about you. And, you know, my focus is in getting this done. As it comes from out of being a school teacher and being you know, all too painfully aware of what happens when kids come to school hungry, when kids come to school not knowing whether gonna, their family's going to be able to have a roof over their head. Those are struggles that we, where I sit, don't deal with, but those are struggles that you deal with, and those are struggles that people ought not to have. And so I'm really happy that we got the 15. The new law faces in the wage increase depending on business size. Companies with more than 50 employees will have to start paying the minimum wage by July 1, 2021. Those with more than 10 employees and less than 50 by 2023. And smaller businesses with less than 10 employees not until 2024. This was done to decrease the financial impact on smaller businesses. And I believe it, because of all, of all of the council members, because of the coalition, because of everybody working together, we didn't come up with just legislation. We came up with the best legislation in America. Today, most employers have an online application process, but many still attend job fairs. That's because they know face-to-face -face is the best way to meet candidates. And recently, hundreds of people came to a job fair in eastern Montgomery County to learn more about opportunities. Susan Kennedy has more. The East County Community Center was buzzing with job seekers eager to network with as many potential employers as possible. The job fair featured more than 70 different companies. I'm proud to be working with you in order to the work. State Senator Craig Zucker said events like this one give potential employees another tool in their toolbox in landing that perfect job. The economy still hasn't fully rebounded and uh, I think especially in today's age where people aren't necessarily having that much faith in their government, I wanted to make sure that government and organizations and businesses came together to provide opportunities for countless uh, Marylanders in the east part of our county. The current unemployment rate in Montgomery County is 3.4%. Though that's below the state level, there are plenty of folks still struggling to find meaningful employment. The East County Job Fair was the perfect chance to check out numerous local companies in one spot. Yeah, I think the um, fire department, uh, it's a great opportunity. I was uh, seeking information for myself and my son. I saw that they, they have um, uh, a lot of benefits um, and also a growth. Um, opportunity. We're here just looking for good people to come in and work for us. We do tree work, we do landscapes and plant health care. Spend a lot of your time outside on the environment, a lot of beneficial stuff, so we're just looking to get good people in. Yeah, no, thank you guys. Today with so many different online job boards, you might think the traditional job fair would become obsolete. 
But by the size of the crowd, it's clear there are still plenty of employers and workers who believe job fairs play an important role in the recruiting process. Uh, the difference between uh, just finding it online and doing it here where we you can actually see one of us, talk to us, ask any questions that you need to know. Uh, we can give you all the information, we can give you the benefits, um, and even little questions that you might not get by reading something online. You know, that's absolutely true. We all spend way too much time behind a computer keyboard and you can get really disheartened when you're always behind the screen and face-to-face -face interaction there's joy in it. I mean, you learn something every time you have a real conversation with a real person. Awesome, awesome. And, uh, this job fair is much more direct and you have the opportunity to really come away having understood much better what people are looking for and you become a better applicant when you've had that experience. This is a list of other jobs that they have. Those people are looking for work and it's really good to see that you've got employers here. There are more hundreds of people in here looking for job opportunities, some people in another room is full of people looking at federal job opportunities. I think they said they've got over 60 employers here today. So I think it's a great event. In Silver Spring, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. The Muslim Community Center, or MCC, in Silver Spring recently hosted an interfaith health fair. The free event was open to the public and to people of all faiths. Attendees got a chance to get flu shots, receive free information, and learn about preventive care. MCC also has its own medical clinic where they welcome patients with no insurance. Crystal Park has a story. No insurance? No problem. The Muslim Community Center Medical Center in Silver Spring offers a wide array of services for the uninsured. Founded in 2003, the center has 22 doctors on staff. Because we provide compassionate care, irrespective of uh, uh, who you are, where you come from, uh, whether you have insurance or not. In fact, about 90% of the clinic's patients are uninsured. The clinic is funded entirely by donations and government grants. Most services are offered at a nominal fee or steeply discounted. Though their main focus is on primary care, the clinic offers specializations such as dental, optometry, and gynecology. The clinic hosts an annual health fair that's open to the public. Dozens of vendors offer free information and even medical services like blood pressure monitoring, flu shots, and blood tests. The Asian American Health Initiative offers bone density tests using this special machine. Trained staff can help explain your results and calculate your likelihood of developing osteoporosis. That is extremely important to provide services such as these, especially to people who don't have health insurance or who may be low income and not aware that these services are even needed or necessary because you're kind of providing a preemptive or preventative care which is what people who don't have health insurance wouldn't ordinarily get. Since opening its doors 14 years ago, the clinic has grown from 53 encounters a year to an expected 20,000 by the end of this year. Council President Roger Berliner, who attended the health fair, says it's events like these that keep the community healthy. What's more important than people staying in good health? And what's more important than our community coming together to to offer that help to people who otherwise may not get it. In Silver Spring, for County Report This Week, I'm Crystal Park. Coming up next on County Report This Week, we sit down with a county executive and talk about the financial forecast for the next fiscal year. And we assess some of the changes that have taken place at the county liquor stores. Liquor Control Director Robert Dorfman will join us right here in the studio. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Lorna Virgili. 
This week, we sat down with County Executive Ike Leggett to tape our monthly show 101. He addressed several yeah. items, including the fiscal year 2019 operating budget. The executive said he is meeting with department directors and that in order to balance the budget, he has already asked each department for a 3% budget cut. Well, there is a shortfall at this point in time. How we make that up depends on a number of facts. A, what are the revenues we will look at a little bit later on, and what are the expenditures that we will have from our departments. But ultimately, we will balance this budget. Uh, it may be one which we would have to provide some cuts, but we aren't sure about the magnitude of that at this point in time. I've already asked our departments to reduce their budgets by about 3% so that they could provide some level of, of support for us going into the next budget cycle. Before the FY19 operating budget is sent to County Council in March of next year, the executive will be hosting several budget forums throughout the county in early 2018. There have been some big changes at the Department of Liquor Control since Robert Dorfman was appointed DLC director almost one year ago. Mr. Dorfman is joining us right now here in the studio to talk about some of the improvements, beginning with the new technology at the warehouses. What has been the impact of modernizing the operations? Hi, Lorna. Thanks. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Uh, before we start talking about technology, I think we need to go back to the basics. Uh, about a year and a half ago, we brought in two senior experienced professionals uh, in the uh, warehouse operations business to completely revamp, basically revitalize uh, our warehouse operations. So we've reconfigured, we've re-racked, we've uh, improved our fleet. Uh, the uh, uh, newest truck that we had in our fleet a year and a half ago was 20 years old. So we've continued to replenish our fleet with new vehicles, which uh, ensured more efficient um, deliveries to our customers, in addition to uh, ensuring that we had driver safety. Uh, from a technology standpoint, we've already implemented uh, scanning on the receiving end. So when we receive product into the warehouse, we properly scan it, it locates where in the warehouse that it goes. Uh, and then in addition to that, we have what's called voice picking, which are headsets that are provided to our uh, warehousemen uh, who are picking the orders and it's computerized so that the accuracy and the uh, level of efficiency is significantly improved. So we've gone from a basically manual warehouse operation to a, a semi-automatic -auto uh, warehouse operation. It's kind of brought us back up to the 21st century. Now, what's new at the 27 retail stores for the holiday season? What can we expect? Well, I think the one thing we can certainly expect is availability. And so uh, I don't think we're going to have the same issue that may have uh, happened in past years where there were issues with shortages. So we are uh, re-merchandising our stores to ensure that we have uh, not only the proper merchandise, that the displays and the merchandising are done uh, properly. We've gone through a significant amount of uh, pricing analysis to make sure that our pricing is at parity and competitive with uh, all everyone else in the marketplace. And we have worked with suppliers to ensure that the promotions and the sales that we have going into the holidays are the best and strongest promotions uh, possible. So uh, we think we've got it well covered and that our, uh, our shoppers this year are going to be pleased with uh, our selection, our pricing, and our customer service. Now, just to finalize very quickly, uh, looking into next year, what else is in your to-do list? It's all customer service related. We've hired a senior marketing executive uh, to bring us uh, to uh, uh, the point in which we are actually acting as a business. Uh, no $300 million business of which we are has, uh, uh, does not have a component in there for sales and marketing. So we brought in an experienced sales and marketing executive to help us focus on the customer by revamping our stores, reconcepting our stores, uh, merchandising better, uh, providing better displays, ensuring that we have the right items on sale, uh, and that the customer facing uh, interactions that we current that we have uh, are going to be to the benefit of the customer. So we're going to we're going to spend a lot of time on the customer service side, but we're also spending a good deal of time on the rebranding effort. Uh, we we believe that we need to reposition our stores, and at some point in time. Uh, address our stores names uh, to more properly reflect the fact that we are really a business. All right, Mr. Dorfman, thank you for joining us. And do remember to visit the DLC website for more information about store locations, product specials, and more. Many of us are still enjoying the beautiful fall foliage, but in Gaithersburg, a crew of some of the county's most dedicated employees are getting ready for old man winter. Susan Kennedy has more on preparations for the upcoming season. It's a four-letter word that gets a reaction like no other. Snow. 
And as we move into colder, shorter days, the inevitable can't be denied. <laughs> We are doing all the things that we need to do in order to be prepared for the snow. But Montgomery now, County officials say they are ready to tackle whatever Mother Nature has in store. In Montgomery County, quality of life is important. This is why clearing the sidewalks, this is why clearing the roads as quickly as possible is important. Uh, people have high expectations in Montgomery County and we try to meet those expectations. When snow happens in Montgomery County, the, the government is the place where everybody turns to. And of course, the fact that you, the, the people who are actually doing all of this work, uh, are here and doing all the necessary things so people can get back on the road and get back to doing the, their, their jobs and, and, and uh, get to the grocery stores and everything for our children. Everything becomes so necessary. So we're here to say those two words that you never hear enough of, and that's thank you. It's a big job. In any snow event, county crews work continuously around the clock until all 500 square miles of county maintained streets are passable. So here you see we have a new uh, piece of equipment. It's a Kubota RTV. And the county has purchased six new Kubota RTVs specifically designed to clear the 60 plus miles of county owned sidewalks. The trails and the sidewalks, the commercial sidewalks that the county has responsibility, residential sidewalks where the county has responsibility of removing the snow. And this will make our operation more efficient. Um, last season we were um, kind of pigeonholed into this uh, operation using handheld shovels and, and walk behind snow blowers. So with the equipment like this that we procured through the support of uh, our county exec and our county council, we, we are able to do those tasks more efficiently. We aren't quite into snow yet, but, but it is something that you really are thinking about all the time, isn't all it? All the time. So, so our, our weather forecasting agencies that we have contracts with, they, they alert us up to seven days prior to events. And then, you know, as, as they get glean more information from the storm pattern and the, and the uh, precipitation, you know, uh, uh, potential, then, then they start updating the, the information for us so we can make more informed decisions on, on when to transition from one activity to snow. That means loading up trucks with the salt stored here in what officials say is the largest salt dome on the East Coast. And even before the first flakes fall, crews are out pre-treating roads with brine. Though winter doesn't officially begin for six weeks, Richard Dorsey and his team are ready and able. Is it an exciting time for you guys, though? Oh, Do you get excited exciting. about it? We love snow. We love snow. <laughs> it's an opportunity for us to address all the residents in this community at one time. <laughs> well, wow, that's a good attitude. <laughs> that's a really good attitude. I don't know that attitude. I say I'd love snow, but that's a good attitude, especially when I'm shoveling it. But in anyway. Gaithersburg, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. Rockville's parking enforcement officers do more than just write tickets. They're here to help as well. And they're also going green. Rock 11 Now's Tony Playa has more. When parking in Rockville, one quarter can keep you from getting a $40 ticket. That's one message that Rockville's parking enforcement officers want you to know. Rockville 11 had the chance to ride along with them in their new eco-friendly electric car. Hello everyone, my name is Marquise, Parking Enforcement Officer with the City of Rockville Police Department. So today we will be riding in a 2017 Nissan LEAF. It goes about 125 miles on pure electricity. There is no gas in this vehicle. Some people don't know exactly what we, what we do. They think we're just like the meter maids that just give people tickets. So this vehicle is going to receive a violation for parking a uh, by a fire hydrant. With City Hall, we basically have the problem with people parking and then walking over to the district court or circuit court. Biggest problem is that I think people just don't read the signs because we have signage when you come in, we have signage when you park. It says you have to sign in at City Hall and people think City Hall is a part of the district court. In Rockville, you can park at any meter if you um, have a handicap lacquer for free. You don't even have a time limit. You can park there all day. Some people think if they're dropping off something, they can just stop in the middle of the road. Even though there's signs posted down the street that say no parking, no stopping. Most people don't realize if you lock your keys in your vehicle, if you call the City of Rockville non-emergency number, they'll dispatch one of our parking enforcement officers to your location and we will get you inside your vehicle. There you go. 
you kind of have to take the, the personal side away and you know this is a job i like yeah. people that's why i I, no I i like doing this job coming up next on counter report this week mcps is celebrating some very special words Plus, veterans get a chance at college education with this celebrated program at Montgomery College. Stay with us, County Report this week. We'll be right back. You're invited to Montgomery County's premier social event, the 32nd Annual Executives Ball, and the beat goes on, will be held Sunday, December 3rd at the North Bethesda Marriott. Celebrate 32 years of support for the arts and humanities. RSVP and purchase raffle tickets online for your chance to win a 2017 Toyota Prius C. Attendance is not required to win. All proceeds benefit arts and humanities organizations. We'll see you on December 3rd. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Lorna Virgili. Congratulations are in order for two MCPS elementary schools as they traveled to Washington, D.C. to receive a very special award. MCPS TV brings you the story. Education leaders from across the nation gathered at the historic Omni Shoreham Hotel in Washington, D.C. to celebrate the 2017 National Blue Ribbon School winners. Two MCPS schools, Ronald McNair Elementary School and Farmland Elementary School, were among the honorees to win this prestigious award. At the twilight's last During the luncheon ceremony, Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos addressed the crowd about the importance of recognizing and sharing the success of these award-winning schools. Of more than 130,000 schools in the United States, you have been recognized as the cream of the crop. You recognize that a world-class education is the surest way for students to achieve their individual goals and dreams. The two MCPS principals shared their thoughts about the day and why their schools received this honor. Well, I think it's really a celebration of the diversity of our school, our staff. They work 110 percent. We have a community that's invested in helping support our staff and our students, and it's been a collaborative effort. We held all of our students to high expectations, and we make sure that every adult that interacts with any student owns that child and is invested in their well-being. We really focused our professional development on our staff, on the critical um, thinking skills, especially understanding and reasoning, um, that we focus for our students on developing growth mindset, understanding that you have to persevere. It's not easy, but you can do anything you set your mind to. The schools will take their national blue ribbon plaques and flags back to their respective schools to further celebrate with their students, staff, and community. Veterans Day was celebrated and Montgomery College did its part to show appreciation to their student population who served. On the Thursday before Veterans Day, Montgomery College's Combat to College program invited student veterans to room 152 in the Rockville Science Center for a hot meal and a place to socialize. Combat to College is an academic and social resource program exclusive to veterans attending Montgomery College. After the meal, the rest of the public was invited to join the veterans in watching a BBC News web documentary called What Makes a Hero? The event was an ongoing part of MC's commitment to veterans. At Montgomery College, we are here to support our veterans and provide a place within our community where we can respectfully discuss the sometimes difficult issues that face veterans, show our pride, and be mindful of the need to allow veterans to define themselves and not be defined by others who have not served. Following the web documentary, a panel discussion with veterans offered everyone a chance to ask questions and share perspectives as to how to honor the service of veterans. If someone treats thank you for your service as the equivalent of saying God bless you after someone sneezes, instead take the time to get to know that veteran, ask them what did they do while they were in the military or even something like how did they feel about their service and you'll get a much richer conversation and you might actually gain a friend in the process. Like I joined the Marine Corps because I needed a job. Now the Marine Corps has done 
amazing things for me and really help the trajectory that got me to where I am today. Thinking about Veterans Day uh, is, is kind of conflicting for me because I don't think there necessarily needs to be a specific day to thank me for signing up so I can get a paycheck. I feel it's a time for veterans to get together with camaraderie and a time for the rest of the communities to actually celebrate what we have done. The best thing that could have come out of the military is be able to start a career and also to do it uh, using benefits and having a stipend to live for, not automatically having to find a job and being stressed out. To find out more about MC's Combat to College program, go to MontgomeryCollege.edu and search Veterans. For County Report this week, I'm Shar Friedberg. If you travel up or down New Hampshire Avenue, it's not hard to notice the beautiful architecture the various religious organizations provide. County planning experts say it spotlights something more in the county. My MC Media's Mitty Hicks explains. Inside the Beltway on Maryland State Route 650 is a road known to many as the gateway to heaven or New Hampshire Avenue. And notably so, there are dozens of religious organizations located on this one corridor. And according to experts, tell us something about Montgomery County. Really, it is one street that I think totally illustrates how diverse Montgomery County is. According to Montgomery history, there are at least 30 congregations on New Hampshire Avenue that represent various versions of Christianity in various languages the Muslim faith, the Cambodian Buddhist society, and so much more. Each of these houses of worship uh, come from a different cultural background or a different faith community, and they were, you know, growing up and going to Blake and passing all these uh, facilities. Like, I learned about all these religions I'd never heard before, like Jains or the Chinmaya Mission or uh, the Greek Orthodox uh, community. They're, it's, it's amazing. Robert Cronenberg, chief of the Area One planning team, says there are few places in the region like this lane of faiths on New Hampshire Avenue, with the possible exception of 16th Street in Washington, D.C. And the reason, he believes, is the cost of land. In terms of why they're there, um, the, the, the expense of the land was probably another part of that, and uh, as it followed the congregations that they serve as well. So the next time you're looking for a cultural experience, you may not have to travel far. Just head to your backyard. Reporting from New Hampshire Avenue, I'm Mitty Hicks for County Report This Week. Coming up on County Report this week, over one million lights go up at Brookside Gardens. It's time to visit this holiday attraction. And meet our pet of the week. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Introducing Ride On Extra, coming to Route 355, fall of 2017. The bus with less stop and more go. Regular ride-on service has 80 stops between Lake Forest Transit Center and the Medical Center Metro Station. Ride-on Extra has 85% fewer stops. Plus, ride-on Extra is all about the extras. Free Wi-Fi, USB charging ports, real-time info displays, and runs every 10 minutes. It's ride-on Extra. Less stop, more go. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Lorna Virgili. With the holiday season fast approaching, what better way than to visit the Garden of Lights at Brookside Gardens, which this year celebrates its 19th season and opens the Friday after Thanksgiving. Step into a magical winter wonderland illuminated with more than one million dazzling colorful lights shaped into handcrafted original art forms of flowers, animals, and other natural elements. Always remember to dress warmly and plan to spend about an hour walking through the gardens. If you get hungry, there is a selection of hot drinks, soups, and sandwiches for sale. Admission is $25 per vehicle Sunday through Thursday and $30 on Friday and Saturday. For more information, visit brooksidegardens.org. Now it's time to meet our pet of the week. Kathy Stanhope joins us from the Montgomery County Animal Services and Adoption Center with more. Kathy? This is Cleo. Cleo is a neutered male and he's just about 10 years old. And as you can see, he's an extreme, extremely loving and affectionate cat. He's very, very beautiful and very, very sweet. The only requirement is that he be on a special diet 
He has no other medication or anything like that. He really is an easy cat to care for and an easy cat to love. So if you have room in your home for Cleo, please give us a call at 240-773-5900 or visit Cleo on the web at montgomerycountymd.gov slash ASD. And with that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm Lorna Virgili, and thank you for watching.